Welcome. This video is going to take a look at the combined gas law and also work some examples of both the individual gas laws and the combined gas law. So the combined gas law is really just the three individual gas laws combined into one equation. Clever, huh? So it would be P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2. So it assumes the number of gas particles, your moles, is still staying the same. So this means you have a gas that you're keeping it in the same container, but you're changing the conditions of that container. But you're not letting any gas in or out of your container, your sample. So you use it when two variables are changing, and you're trying to find the change in the third variable. So for example, if I take a look at this problem, and again, either write down or highlight my information, a diver blows a 0.75 liter air bubble. So that's the first volume that's being given to me. And as the bubble rises to the surface, the pressure goes from 2.25 to 1.03. So I've got P1 is 2.25 atmospheres. And then P2 is also given, it goes down to 1.03 atmospheres. The, what will be the volume of the bubble at the surface? So they want to know V2, and I could just use Boyle's Law if that's all that they gave me, but they also say the temperature changes from T1 of 78.4 degrees Celsius to T2 being 78.6 degrees Celsius. So right away, I'm going to change both those temperatures into Kelvin, so I don't forget about that. So plus 273, this is really going to be 351.4 Kelvin. And 78.6 plus the 273 is going to be 351.6 Kelvin. And so since I have all three variables um, being involved here, I need to use my combined gas law, P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. And this is really no more difficult to solve for. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here so we have a little more room to work with. So when I plug in P1, I've got 2.25 times V1, 0.75 over T1. 351.4 equals V2, this is my X or my unknown, times P2, I guess it should be P2 first, but in math magic that doesn't matter, so 1.03 times X and a T2, 351.6. And the process is still the same here. I'm going to cross multiply and divide. So when I cross multiply, I get 2.25 times 0.75 times 351.6 equals 351.4. I feel like I have something wrong here. Let me just go back and check. I guess my temperature didn't change very much. Okay. So 351.4 times x times one point. So now I divide, but this time I have to divide by both the 351.4 and I have to divide by the 1.03. So over here I have to make sure that um, when I'm putting this into my calculator that this is all in one set of parentheses. So X or V2 should be equal to 1.63, and again, keeps the same label as volume 1 had, or 1.63 liters. So how do you choose the right gas law equation? Well, even when we introduce the ideal gas law in the next section, I use the same process. I read through the problem and write down all the data or the numbers given to me. I label them as pressure, volume, or temperature, and if there's more than one pressure or volume, I include the P1 and T1. I notice if any variable is said to be constant, because that means I get to ignore that. I don't need that variable in my equation. So if I only have two variables, one of the individual gas laws will work. Although um, 
the combined gas law would work as well. You just get to ignore the variable not being used. And if you have three different variables, then you're going to need to use the combined gas law. So let's look at a few examples. So my first try it for you says a gas at 35 0.5 degrees Celsius occupies a volume of 2.6 liters. What volume will it occupy at 80 degrees Celsius? So I'd encourage you to pause this uh, screencast, see if you can come up with the correct equation and the correct solution, and then come back and look at my solution. So I have temperature 1 at 35.5 degrees Celsius. I'm going to immediately change that into Kelvin. which is the same as 308.5 Kelvin. I have V1, which is 2.60 liters. And I'm being asked for V2 if T2 is 80 degrees. So again, I'm going to add the 273 to that right away. And that's 353.0 Kelvin. So since I only have volume and temperature, I can use the individual gas law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, and go ahead and plug in 2.60 over 308.5 should be equal to V2 or X over 353.0. And when I cross multiply and divide, 2.60 times 353 divided by 308.5 is going to be equal to V2. I see that V2 has also had an increase to 311.92 or 311.9 and that would be liters. Here's another one for you to try. A sample of neon gas at a pressure of 1.38 atmospheres fills a flask with a volume of 125 milliliters at a temperature of 44 degrees. If the gas is transferred to a new flask with a volume of 250 milliliters and a temperature of 95 degrees, what's the new pressure? So again, I would encourage you to pause this and see if you can come up with the equation and the solution on your own. And as I look at my solution, I'm going to start by writing down everything I have, P1, is 1.38 atmospheres. V1 is 125 milliliters, and that's okay that's milliliters instead of liters, just a smaller sample. T1 is 44.0 degrees Celsius, so that's really 273 plus my 44 is really 317.0 Kelvin. And again, when you're doing it mathematically, it doesn't matter if you hold on to that zero. It just helps you keep, put, keep track of your sig figs. So new flask with the volume V2 is going to be 250 milliliters. T2 is going to be 95 degrees or 368 Kelvin. And P2 is what I'm being asked to find. And since all three variables are involved, I'm going to have to use P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. So if I plug and chug here, I'm going to have 1.38 times 125 over 317 is equal to P2 times 250 over the 368. And as I scroll up here to make some room, that means I'm going to have 1.38 times 125 times 368 equal to 317 times P2 times 250. So when I divide, I'm going to have the 317 times the 250 that I have to divide on each side. Use my star there so my x's don't confuse you. And I'm coming up with P2 equal to 0 
and I could hang on to actually one more sig fig here, 0 0.801. And when I look back, I see that my first pressure was in atmospheres, so this will also be in atmospheres. Here's one final example for you to try. A bike tire has a pressure of 80 PSI. PSI is commonly used on things that we inflate, basketballs, our bike tires, etc. Um, it just means pounds per square inch. So when the temperature is 55 degrees, 80 PSI, what will the new pressure be if the temperature increases to 95.8? So go ahead and try this on your own. So I write things down, so I have P1 equal to 80 PSI, I have T1 equal to 55 degrees, but I have to add the 273 to that right away. So I'm going to have an 8, 328.0 Kelvin. P2 is what I'm being asked to find, and T2 is 95.8. And again, if I convert that, I don't quite, oh, I put the 2 here, but as I convert that, let me get hold of things here, it's just 273, I come up with 328, oh, that's not it, 368.8 Kelvin for my second temperature. So using P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. I would have 80 over 328 has to be equal to X or P2 over 368.8. When I cross multiply 80 times 368.8 and then I'll have to divide by the 328 and I'm going to come up with X or P2 equal to 89.95 or you could just round that to 90.0 and since it's pressure it has to have the same unit as my beginning one PSI for my second pressure.